Hi guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this video. I'm Jay Theo, and if you are new here, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. I know it's been a little bit since I posted a video, so I appreciate you tuning back in. I hope everyone is having a great day, a great week, a great month, a great all of the above. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm sure by now you guys have all seen the viral video with Camp Newton and Dr. Sham Bryant. I'm not married, right? I have beautiful children. How many? Eight. I, was, I thought, I, I didn't do my research. I thought it was four, but eight, okay. No, baby, cool. it's, it's By how eight. many women? Three. And this is the kicker. I want more. Now. By multiple women? What's the intent? I just want God about to your bring wife? Him. I just want God to bring them. Oh, okay. And I watched the full two hour plus interview and I watched a three part interview with Nick Cannon and Dr. Bryant. So you guys don't have to, but I will say Dr. Bryant dropped a lot of gems. She dropped a lot of amazing gems that I think black man, black women, gay, straight, whoever you are, I think it's worth the watch. You will have to power through dealing with Cam Noon and Nick Cannon and they are very defensive. Um, and they did not always receive her message well and they show a lot of their true colors, but I definitely think it's worth the watch if you can power through that. All to say, I have many, many, many thoughts about both these interviews, and as someone who cares deeply about the black community, as someone who understands that there are a lot of Cam News and Nick Connors out there that do not have the multi-millionaire network, I think it's worth continuing this conversation and having a deeper discussion about it. So one major talking point that came out of both interviews was this fear or this lack of desire to want to commit to a woman, usually through marriage, versus wanting to raise children in this world and to create kids. So y'all, what was so confusing to me about this is how, especially Cam Newton, he has such a fear of getting married. He kept saying he had a fear of getting married. He's taking his time. But at the end of the day, it's just like, how can you be so afraid of just committing to a woman, just committing to a relationship, but you're not afraid of having to raise all of these black children in the world that we live in, that does not bring you fear. It does not bring you fear to make sure that these kids are raised right, that they have a good understanding of the world, that they are gonna have the tools to go into the world and be in the world as adult. That doesn't bring you fear, but what brings you fear is committing to a woman. And y'all, that's why I feel like when men say they have a fear of getting married, and y'all, I'm not even somebody that's really into marriage. I'm not a big person that believes in the constitution of marriage. I myself don't even know if, if marriage is something I want, want for myself. I feel that it is a cop-out when men say that. It is a cop-out. You don't have a fear of getting married. You just don't want to have to commit to being loyal to someone. You don't want to have to commit to having to understand and partner with someone. You don't want to have to be held accountable when you do wrong and when you're not loyal. That is what you're not even afraid of. That's just something you just don't want to deal with. And I wish people would just be more honest with the reality of it. You don't want to get married because you don't want to have to deal with a woman um, holding you accountable. You don't want to have to deal with being loyal to a woman. You don't want to have to deal with any of that. You want to operate the way you operate without any consequences. Even though there are life consequences to the decisions we make, he still wants to, and Nick Cannon too, they want to operate that's why Nick Cannon says he's poly and he has these multiple girlfriends and all these things. But you do this because you definitely, you don't want to actually go through the motions of committing and having to be loyal to somebody. You know, but you still want to want to cause these women all this angst and all these problems and argue with them and and, 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 and don't be honest with them. And as they both say, manipulate them and be toxic. Y'all still want to be toxic to these women, but you don't actually want to be a loyal partner to these women. So that's the first thing where it's just like, can we stop acting like that's not what it is? You don't have a fear of commitment. You don't have a fear of marriage. You just don't want to be held accountable. and You don't want to be a true partner to anyone. That's the reality of it. Also, you want to be hypersexual. You want to be able to do what you want sexually without any consequences. You want to be able to have, and that's really what irks me when it comes to how they act like, you know, having all these kids is that, you know, and it's just a gift that they get to deliver their sperm and make all these babies. But the reality is these kids are just, you know, a casualty and a consequence of you just being hypersexual and you not knowing how to have discipline for yourself as a grown man. Now, 
all adults, we all adults, we like sex. You know, I like sex. We all like sex. We, we, we understand that. But there's still a level of discipline you have to have when it comes to being a sexual person. And we all know that children in a straight relationship are the byproduct of sex. They, 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 they just are. And at the end of the day, these children are humans. And my biggest issue with Cam Newton and Nick Cannon is that I feel like they dehumanize their children. These are human beings. They start off as babies, but they become human. They become adults, but they are full on humans from the moment they are born. And I feel like a lot of men like Cam Newton, Cam Newton and Nick Cannon, even the ones that are not buku rich, they see having children as just like an accessory to their manhood, an accessory to show off their hypersexuality, just, just another element to really showcase their masculinity. And, and what really irks me is that because they care so much about their masculinity and how they're perceived and their hypermasculinity, and they have such a God complex that their sperm and what they have to offer is just so special and so important to the world because they're rich or because they're athletes, they would never get a vasectomy. They know that if they cannot offer a woman children, that that would limit the access to certain women that they have. They want to have full access to, to all different types of women, and they know women that are trying to deal with them ultimately probably want the opportunity to have a child with them. Like Dr. Brian said, they attract low-functioning women. Now that everything is done, I'm going to put my baby to sleep. Um, I don't know about y'all. I don't know what brings you guys joy, but it really brings me joy to serve. I love being a servant. I love to serve. I, it just brings me joy. I love it. I love serving. I, I, I love it. I love it. I don't give a damn. I'll be up at 6 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, cooking breakfast, serving. I just love that. I love it. Yeah. It's like, it just gives me purpose. And now with the new baby, now I just feel even more purposeful. Especially like when I breastfeed. Oh, I feel so full of life. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, come on, baby. Let's go night night. These kids are just a casualty of, honestly, two adults both making bad decisions. Ultimately, the men, though, in these situations have the money, have the power, have the fame. So I do feel like they have more control of the situation in the fact that they often do manipulate the situation. They often do are toxic to these women. Um, and the byproduct are these kids. One thing Nick Cannon spoke about a lot in his interview was fleeing and abandonment and how he likes to flee and he likes to, you know, when a situation's getting too rough, he likes to flee. If it gets too hostile, he wants to leave, he wants to flee and he has abandonment issues. And I feel like both of these two, both of these men have abandonment issues. The fact that you're fleeing from woman to woman to woman to keep making babies, to keep being toxic, to keep manipulating, like, if you really feel like you were in control and you manipulate these women and you are, you know, the ones leading them out and you are bettering them, as they both said, they're bettering these women, then why do you need multiple ones? Why can't you just control one? But you are fleeing the situation because when it gets too intense, when you, when you have to be held accountable, when the woman's functionality is starting to get a little bit higher, it's not so low, and she realizes what's really going on, then you leave, then you flee. You know, and they keep continuously, continuously, continuously doing it. And they want to play it off like, oh, I just like women. And, you know, I just like connect with different women. And they all are so special. But but you, you keep leaving them. So how special really are they? You know? Um, but I think that fleeing concept is something that I think a lot of black men do. A lot of men, they like to flee. They like to leave the situation. They don't like to actually sit and build and actually curate a real family and actually try to work through the problems and actually learn how to have conversations, how to learn how to grow, how to learn how to evolve. And I think that's a big disservice to our community. And I think when figures like these millionaires and these athletes and these prominent figures in, in our community speak on having families and having kids as if it's just nothing and it's just you can just walk away and you can just flee and you can just be so nonchalant about creating broken homes it's going to create a community of men and, and, and young boys that think that this is okay so speaking on that i think it's a perfect segue into another major point that i've noticed with both these interviews is the provider versus an actual father when it comes to these kids and y'all, I think this is something a lot of people deal with, not just black kids. I think white kids, Latino kids, Asian kids, kids across the gamut deal with a lot of their fathers being providers and not true fathers. 
And don't get me wrong. I do think Nick Cannon and Cam Newton, they are involved in their kid's life to the best of their ability. I do think they, you know, try to play the father role and lean into the father role as much as they can. I'm not saying they are bad people. I'm not saying they don't care about their kids. I'm not saying they don't, they don't show up in, as, as a father can in their situation the best way a father can. But I feel like to be a true, to be someone who truly leans into fatherhood, you would not cre keep creating these broken homes because at the end of the day, you would care so much about the well-being of your child mentally. These kids have to deal with their siblings having all these different mothers. All these different mothers definitely do not like each other, do not get along. And we all know that kids are, are used as pawns and are used as tools to manipulate situations. You know, when people are going through turmoil in relationships, kids are used. So it's just, that's going to be an aspect of their childhood. Also, just the simple fact that they never were able to be grow up and be raised in the same household as their siblings. Or there is going to be things that, that you're going to miss. You you cannot be at eight places at the same time. That you just can't. You can't be, Nick Cannon, you can't be at 12, 13 places at the same time. So these kids are going to, like Dr. Brian said, have a deficit. And that's something that I I feel like more men should be worried about. When your kids get older, they're gonna think about how their dad just continued to have so many kids that it lessened the amount of time that they had with him, that it lessened the amount of connection they were able to build with him. And as someone who, my dad was a provider. He made sure we had food to eat. He made sure bills were paid. He never made, we never had to want for anything. We never had to need anything. But at the end of the day, my dad was not emotionally there. My dad was go to work, go in his room, lock the door. My dad could not name you my best friends. My dad could not name my favorite color. My dad could not name my favorite movie. My dad could not name anything. He could probably couldn't even name most of my teachers. My dad, you know, he just wasn't that involved. My mom was, was, was the, like a lot of other families. She was the, the present parent. She was the one that really got to know me and really connected with me emotionally. You know, I love my dad. He actually has passed away. But even up until my dad's death, my dad still looked at us kids' kids as things he had to provide for, not as people that he should have wanted an emotional bond with and to have a true connection with. And I think a lot of fathers lean into fatherhood, looking into it in that way. And I think if this continues to be how black men you know, all men view fatherhood, you're really just doing a disservice to children and the future children. If you think being a father is to be a provider, you think because you have a lot of money, you can have a billion kids and they're gonna love you because you have all this money. That is not true. There are so many celebrity kids where they do not deal with their parents, with their fathers. So many kids, I mean, look at Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt. All their kids do not deal with them. And they're some of the richest actors in, in Hollywood. And they're white. But that just goes to show that you can have all this money and your kids still not want to deal with you because you were not a good father. You were not emotionally there. You were not present. Or you did my mom dirty. A lot of kids don't like their dads because of how they did their mom or how they disrespected their mom. Like, all of these are factors that you have to be concerned about when you are going into fatherhood. And that and was in a father that truly understands that, and a father that even if he didn't in the beginning understand that, was to work on that and build a better connection with his kids and grow and evolve, that's somebody who really sees fatherhood as fatherhood and is not just a financial provider. I feel like we in the, in the community, especially the black community, they look at that word provider and they just lean on it too much. A father still needs to be a father, and to be a parent is to be a verb. It is what you do. It's the bonds you build. I'm not a parent, but I'm well aware that parenthood is a very nuanced, layered thing. There's a lot of nuances and layers to it, and it is not just at the surface just paying for things and being a financial provider. And if anyone, if that's what you think fatherhood is, you should not be a father. You should not be procreating. You for damn sure should not be having eight to 12 kids. Okay, so another great point that I feel like Dr. Bryant really drove home was the complacency that Cam Newton and Nick Cannon have, that they love to sit and live in their d dysfunctional norm. They love sitting in that dysfunction. And honestly, I think this is one of the biggest reasons black men, white men, white women, black women, all different types of people, why they don't evolve and grow is because they like complacency and they like to sit in their dysfunction and they've gotten so used to it. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of work to continue to grow and to want to evolve and to want to, to, to change it up, to be a better you, to be a better person and not so much like a good or bad better person, but just to be, just to develop.
Like they say in TV shows and movies, to have that character develop. But a lot of people, they are so stuck in their ways and they're just so used to just doing what they do and a lot of people know they need to evolve and grow and I feel like even with Cam and Nick Cannon they know that they have a lot of growing to do they know that they need to do better that they are just so used to and they're just so accepting of their dysfunction especially when people around them are yesing them and are allowing them to be this way that they're just going to stay in it and stay stuck in it even you saw when they're Responding to her, they get so defensive, so, so defensive. They're talking over her because they don't want to hear it. Because they don't, because I feel like if you felt like what she had to say, it's whatever, you're going to let her speak, it's not bothering you, you wouldn't be talking over her, you wouldn't be getting defensive, you wouldn't be cutting her off. But you know there's things you need to change. There's no, there, you know there's things you need to do better, but you want to stay stuck in that situation. And I hate that for, for, for anybody, you know. As someone who I do believe I am high functioning, y'all, I've been in therapy since I was 19 years old, on and off. I've been in group therapy. I read so many books about emotional well-being and health. I'm, I'm a very present person, and I've done the work, and I continue to do the work. It's not done. I'm only 33 years old. But at the end of the day, I am someone where I try to, to work on myself. When somebody lets me know that I do something that bothers them or that's something that, that is a concern to them that, that I do, I look into how I can change it. I ask them how. I research how. I speak to my therapist how. I find ways to, to be better, to grow. There's so many resources out here for us when it comes to growing our most intelligence. And I feel like you have to be ready to do the work. And I feel like a lot of humans really do themselves a disservice by not wanting to do that work, not wanting to evolve, and not wanting to grow. At the end of the day, healing is a journey. It is a lifelong process, like Dr. Bryant said. And when you start understanding that and start living in that, I feel like that becomes the new normal for you. Always being open to, to, to evolving and growing and, and having a new understanding and being able to grasp and, and, and be able to, to, to kind of step back and look at yourself. Because being introspective, and being self-aware yourself, but really being introspective and being able to, to look at yourself and, and reflect on yourself, that was just such a powerful tool to add to your toolkit. And I really wish people like Cam Newton, I feel like Nick Cannon was getting there. He still was very defensive. I definitely think Nick Cannon was there way more than Cam Newton. As, as far as like looking at himself, reflecting a little bit, receiving what she was saying, they both still gave her a hard time. But I definitely think Nick Cannon is, Nick Cannon is on a level of healing a little bit further along than Camp Newton. And it's good to see that he has that in him. And I just wish for, you know, obviously we're talking about black men in this situation. I, I wish for my black men, my fellow black men, my brothers, that we can be more introspective and self-reflective and think more about how we can grow and evolve and stop being so okay with being dysfunctional. Because one thing both Nick Cannon and Cam Newton kept saying was, everybody fucks up. Or life be life and life be life and life be life and. Yes, life be life and. Yes, we make decisions and we gotta reflect on them and figure out what the next move is. Yes, sometimes we make mistakes, but you gotta be able to learn and grow and, 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 and develop from that. You can't just keep staying stuck, keep doing the same thing because life be life and. Like, that's just not something that you can, you should do. And I feel like when people talk about everybody goes through things, life be life in, that's just another way to make excuses for your behavior and make excuses for not wanting to be better and do better and, and make a type of shift or change in the way that you operate in your life. Like, I feel like when you, when you always say everybody does this or stuff happens, shit happens, it's just another way of saying like you don't care. But I think at the end of the day, you're doing the most harm to yourself in this instance, they're doing a lot of harm to the children involved, which is sad. Um, but even ultimately, the kids are going to grow. They're going to become adults. They're going to realize what relationship they really have with their father eventually. And that may lead them in a good path or a negative path, but they will eventually become adults. But ultimately, I feel like with Cam and Nick Cannon, at the end of the day, when they're on their deathbeds, you're really harming yourself through all of this by not wanting to understand and grow and develop and be a better version of you. Because even if they were becoming a better version of you, that's a better version you could offer your children. That's a better understanding you can have of parenthood, of fatherhood, by allowing yourself to grow and develop. A better co-parent environment for them if you just wanted to, to, to allow yourself to grow and develop and look past all these excuses uh, of not trying to be better. And with that being said, lastly, I really do want to touch on the conversation of high functioning versus high value especially because this thing like that was just going over both Cam Newton and Nick Cannon's head I definitely understand where Dr. Bryant was coming from 
I understand why these conversations were very hard for her because when you are somebody that is high functioning, you're talking or, 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 or experiencing someone that is low functioning, they're not where you're at mentally. They're not at a place where they understand how to grow and evolve so that they can even receive the message sometimes. And I think that's why for, you know, what was one point that they bring up with Nick Cannon, um, he talked about how, you know, it must get lonely. And if you're so high functioning, then, you know, there must not be that many options. It's like, yeah, the pool gets smaller. And like she said, it's not just with um, lovers, it's with friends, it's with family, it's with everybody. When you are a high functioning individual, when you have done the work and you have have a better sense of self and you have a more secure attachment style and you definitely continue to, to make it to be present and to be aware and to and to step back and to regulate your emotions and to really build that 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 emotional intellect there's definitely going to be less people there that match your energy there just is you know um but even being a high functioning person is understand that people are going to be at different levels and to understand that everybody's journey is different and that you you may be at a certain high function level but somebody may be here and a high functioning person still understands that there's always room to grow like she said so i feel like there's levels to everything there's understanding to everything and i i i think that it was very upsetting to see how Nick Cannon and Cam Newton want to discredit people that are high functioning. They were discrediting that there is even high functioning, high value men out there that will be available for women today. It was like they, they were making a joke out of that there's no men that are high functioning and high value or no men that will even be like high functioning, low value that a woman would want to date. Like, I'm sorry that y'all are not loyal and y'all have discussed manipulating women and y'all have discussed being toxic all the time, but there are men out there that are high functioning and have, that have done the work and that want to be with women that are also high functioning, that are not trying to chase women that are low functioning because at the end of the day, they're not low functioning, like she said. So I just thought that was just interesting and as someone, I am a gay man, I date men. That's why another reason why these videos were so triggering for me because yes, I'm not a straight woman. Yes, I can't have kids. But just seeing how these men operate just reminds me a lot of the guys I've dated, a lot of guys that I've been around and just, how hard it is when you are a high functioning person, when you have a level of emotional intelligence, when you are self-aware, when you can regulate your emotions, when you can think deeper, when you can not take a step back. You're, you're trying to connect with somebody who doesn't do that, who can't do that, who won't do that, who won't have a more open mind. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. But there's still a sense of peace and being like, I'm just gonna wait till I find that high functioning person. I'm gonna wait till I can find that person that even if even if I'm at, at 80 and they're at 65, they still have that room to have a level of understanding and to grasp and to grow and to evolve or even wanna grow and evolve. Cause that's a big piece of it too. People have to want to grow and evolve. And there's a lot of people out there that, like I said earlier, that just don't. So it's frustrating. It can be lonely at the top. You know, it can be a long, it can be a smaller pool of people, but I think there's still a sense of peace that comes with knowing that I'd rather have peace with myself, I'd rather have peace on this journey to finding my person than to be dealing with someone and settling and dropping what I need from someone out of of just wanting a body around or just wanting somebody around, you know? So, cause at the end of the day, y'all, was the point where she was talking to Nick Cannon, she basically was saying like, what are you overcompensating for with all these baby mamas? And he's, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And then he finally says, you know, I, I'm overcompensating with, by, by wanting control, by like wanting respect, by wanting control. And y'all, one thing she really said that really sat with me was, you're overcompensating to control others because you don't have control over yourself. You're overcompensating to have the control over it. You're low functioning, trying to control others because you don't have control of yourself because a high functioning person has control of themselves. A high functioning person ha controls their emotions, regulate their emotions. They can step back, read a room, they can decipher, they can observe, they can sit in their feelings. With all that being said, y'all, the major point that I want to end with when it comes to my thoughts is that, first off, I think Dr. Bryant is so brilliant. She is one, uh, one of the most brilliant speakers, psychologists there I've ever seen on, from TV to like social media. I honestly think she's one of the best. The way she articulates herself and the way she explains things and the way she can massage a situation and still get her point across, I think is just like, I don't know, like, I just think it's just amazing. She definitely is an expert in her field and I understand why she has all the accolades she does. Um, 
with all that being said, ultimately, I have so much love for the black community and I just want us to be able to evolve and grow and just be better humans, not so much just for ourselves, but also for our children, for our family. The more work we do for ourselves, the more time we take to break these generational curses, the more time we take to break and shake up our dysfunctional norms, we are allowing ourselves to become the best version of ourselves that create can create better communities for our community. There's so much greatness in the black community. There's so many beautiful beings, even Cam Newton and Nick Cannon, they are known for their athletic ability, they are known for their, their, their comedy, they are known for their entertainment. They still offer something beautiful and I feel like if they worked on themselves more, if they if they really tried to get out of the, the, their dysfunctional norms, they really tried to grow and evolve, they could offer so much more to the world. Black men, my brothers, I love y'all, I care for you, I want us to do better when it comes to our families, when it comes to building a community, when it comes to building connections, when it comes to growing, evolving, and when it comes to being introspective and looking at ourselves. We have it, y'all. We have it, we have it, we have it. Let's be continue to be open to, to hearing um, what others have to say. Let's continue to be open to, to pushing ourselves to grow, to evolve, to develop a stronger sense of self. We have it in us, we have it in us, we have it in us. So guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. If you stay to the end, I appreciate you. Thanks so much. If you are liking this content, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have thoughts, which I definitely, definitely want to hear your thoughts, drop a comment, hit that like button. If you like this type of conversation, if you like this type of content, please let me know. And as always guys, do your best to stay safe, stay positive, and I will see you guys on the next video.